Hello friends, well uh, in this presentation what we'll try to do basically is take a look at the concept of frames. Now there are going to be various types of frames, right? Number one we can have moment resisting frames, number two we can have breast frames, number three we can have some kind of a frame which is uh, an amalgamation of maybe moment resisting and uh, shear walls or breast frames and shear walls. Now what is a frame basically? A frame is some kind of a structure which is built of say a beam and two columns suppose this is column 2 this is column 1 and obviously it has some support so a frame is this kind of a structure which is built of one beam and two columns the amalgamation of beam and column right uh, is basically what we call as frame now it's pretty important to understand how does this frame take in the loads that apply on it right so and herein we can classify the frames basically on the way they take in the loads into moment resisting frames and the brace frames right first let us understand what's the difference between hinge joint and some sort of a fixed joint for example let us say that I have a hinge joint like this and this joint say it's hinged or I should say it's pinned so this is my member this is another member I have now if I apply load what will happen is that the angle between the members say if it's equal to theta after application of load it will be somewhat like this that is it will change say to theta 1 so theta 1 definitely won't be equal to theta so in case of hinge joint as the hinges cannot resist any moment falling on it definitely there will be certain angular uh, deviation right that is there will be certain deflection so for example if I have some kind of a simply supported beam set and I if I apply loads as this is hinged it cannot take in it cannot resist any moment as such and as such there will be this angular deviation so this is equal to theta 1 so basically what happens is that the beam and column there is certain angular deviation and the relative angle between the beam and column it definitely changes so theta 1 is not equal to theta but in case of fixed joint what happens is that if this joint was fixed say I take out the spin connection and make this joint some kind of a fixed joint then what happens then the thing what the thing happens is that when I apply load the relative angle between these two members won't change so it will be somewhat like say like this but this relative angle will be equal to theta so theta in both the cases is same in case of fixed joint now the moment resisting frames the connection between beams and columns are essentially called the rigid connections right that is the relative angle between the beam and column won't change right so in moment resisting frames how does the moment resisting frames take in the loads as such let us let us try to understand that for example I have a frame like this and say that this is my rigid connection 1 and this say is my rigid connection 2 and this is my beam 1 this is my column 2 say and this is my say column 1 and here are my supports so basically if a load falls say this is my load F right if a load falls how does this load get redistributed and is transferred to this support let us see now this load this load F will have two components one along this direction that is FH and one along this direction FP so what I have is now some sort of a load gravity load and some sort of a lateral load so both these loads are present and we will see that where the both these loads can be taken by this moment resisting frame right so what I have now is a lateral load FH and a vertical load FP now let us isolate this beam and draw it as a FBD if I isolate this beam and draw it as a FBD it will be some kind of a thing like this wherein FV is acting here FH is acting here right and there will be a reaction R1 here, there will be a reaction, say R2 here, right? Or I should write it as RV1 and 
Here it should be R V two, right? There will there should also be a reaction here, uh, which horizontal reaction, and that will be essentially R H one and R H two. And as this joint is some kind of a rigid joint, we have three support reactions and not two. That was in case of hinge connection. So because this joint is some sort of a rigid joint, we have some kind of a resisting moment which will resist the moment at this point, basically. So what I have is some kind of a thing, a moment resisting. So M1, say, and this is say is equal to M2, right? So this is my FBD, and if I can solve out this, I can find out RH1, RV1, M1, RH2, RV2, M2. Right? I can solve this out. Ha! Huh. Now the next thing is, how does this beam transfer this reaction? This all these three reactions will now be transferred to the color. Right? That is, as this joint is essentially in equilibrium, so this RV1 so must balance. So R V one in the downward direction, R H one in the left direction, and M one being anti-clockwise, this will be having a clockwise moment. So essentially, what I have is that due to this load, there are this support reaction M one, R V one, and R H one, and all these three reactions are transferred to column two like this. And essentially, when a load falls, it will be transferred from the beam to the joints. To the column, and this is the main principle of the moment-resisting frame. So, if we can make the joint perfectly rigid, which is not possible, if we can make the joint perfectly rigid, what we are doing is that we are essentially do, uh, we are essentially transferring load with better efficiency. That is, almost all the load or all the moment is transferred. So, here it uh, is. So, this is basically all about moment-resisting frames. And the next lecture, what I will try to do is get everybody acquainted with the concept of breast frames, which is pretty important too. Thanks a lot.